Hello. Right, so let's uh, talk you through this work solution. So we've got a framework. Important thing about our framework is really when we are looking for external reactions here. So we're looking for this re external reaction R A Y. We're looking for this external reaction R E Y. Um, and when you've got a problem like this, if the essentially speaking is ignore the framework. Look for your forces, <coughs> and then bring your forces back down so that they either hit a horizontal x-axis or a vertical y-axis. Uh, for this case, it's nice and simple. We've got a force here, line, and we've got to track its line of action so it hits something, and it's going to hit roughly here, isn't it? So it's, this is the uh, the point where um, uh, it will hit the y-axis. So that will move into, uh, we're going to imagine that we're moving that force and we're going to move it so it hits there. This one's already on the x-axis so we don't have to move it any. Okay, so let's, uh, let's carry on with our solution. So the first thing we're going to do with our solution is to sum up our forces in the x-direction. So unlike our previous beam problems, this is actually uh, a bit more interesting. So let's go back to our framework and we see that we do have this force here. Uh, we've hinged it over here at this location. So we've got a reaction force going off in that direction to the right and then we've got this uh, this external force going off to the left so we do have some forces to play with this time so I've got a minus 50 so that's this force here I've got a plus REX so that's that force there and um, nothing else so I can rewrite this as REX equals 50 kilonewtons. So I've solved my first equation. Now let's uh, s solve the forces in the y direction. So what can we see in the y direction? Well we've got uh, this one going in the y direction going upwards, this one going in the y direction going downwards, this one here going in the y direction going upwards. So we've got an RAY going upwards, an REY going upwards and a hundred going downwards. So let's sum up our forces so we're going to put the RAY going upwards, the REY going upwards, and the 100 going downwards. Let's rearrange that so we have the unknowns on the left and the known on the right. And we'll write this as equation 1. What to do next? Well, the next thing is to take moments. We need to decide where to take the moments. So uh, this particular example has decided to take the moments at at point A. The advantage of point A is that it's easy to measure things from that location. You're measuring things from left to right. Disadvantage is that you potentially, although you don't, you potentially have two uh, introducing two unknowns into your equation. In this particular case we're not going to have two unknowns because you notice that when we take moments our uh, going along here we hit this force here and it was going in the parallel direction to the direction of distance so therefore this is not going to create a moment for us so we're lucky right so let's go back so we're going to take moments at a we're going to define things going clockwise as positive using our UE convention and then we will find our forces and times them by the distances for where they've hit the, their particular axis and work out what kind of moment they've got. So apparently I've got three moments here, so let's look at my diagram see if that's true. So first one I can see is I'm going to take this 50, take it back to the y-axis here. It's going to have a distance of, what, 4 meters to get from there to there. It's going to go anti-clockwise because this arrow is pointing in this direction. So it's going anti-clockwise. So we've got minus 50 times 4. So that's the first one. Next force uh, I can see is this one here. So that's going to create a moment which is a positive moment because it's going downwards. It's going to go around 
the pivot like this okay so that's a hundred uh, going downwards is a distance of three away from the pivot so we've got a hundred times three so that's a, as a positive hundred times three and the last force I can see that he's got a perpendicular distance this one here I've already described how this one doesn't create a moment so this one here has got three six nine twelve it's twelve away from that pivot and it also will be creating a negative clockwise turning moment so that's where we're going to get the those three forces from so minus 50 times 4 um, minus re times 12 so they're my negative moments and then I've got a positive one of 100 times 3 let's rearrange that so we get the unknowns on the left the knowns on the right rearrange that and we find that REY equals 8.33 kilonewtons substituted back into your equation 1 and then we're going to find out what RAY is so substituted back into this equation we're going to take the 100 take away the 8.33 job done we got uh, RAY is 91.67 kilonewtons Final thing to do is just to uh, label up your diagram. So we've uh, now got a nice free body diagram that we're working with here. Well, we've got the external forces here, the 50 and the 100. And we've got these reaction forces here from the hinge here and uh, from our pivot here. Okay, job done. Yeah, happy.